Salons Blues fans, my name is Melissa and my co-host is Leslie. We decided we wanted to share our salon stories. We both have an interest in crime stories and a fascination with the psychic world. So settle in each week as we share another story with you. Who knows, you might even learn something. Until we hit record. It's recording. Hello, Leslie. How are you? Good morning, Melissa. And how are you doing? I'm in a great mood. You sound like it. <laughs> it is a really pretty day out. It's going to be hot. Oh my gosh. I know. I'm so excited. I guess I what I'm doing later weather. today. Well, I think you're going out on a boat. I am probably. Okay. So it's up early enough. So we need to discuss this because, um, <laughs> well, it's two pronged. First of all, obviously we were, we're a little late on recording this week, everyone, but yes. I went for a hike with my son and we ended up like coming down about, I don't know, it was almost eight o'clock and I, we had kind of tentatively planned to record last night at eight. And I said, Hey, yeah, I'm not like gonna... more like seven ish when you called me. Cause oh. I was, I was willing and able to jump out of the boat cause I drove separately. Oh, okay. And I could have gone home to still make our eight o'clock time. But since you texted, I still, it was cutting it close, but I was okay. like, sweet, I'm going to stay out here. Okay. Yeah. Cause I, we were just coming down off of this, um, hike and which we could totally talk about cause it was really cool. It was out near Newburgh and it's a monk, uh, Trappist monk property. That's where they live. And they've opened this hike up to people. And I was really dubious. My son found it and I'm like, eh, whatever. And he's like, Hey mom, do you want to go do this with me? Well, at this point he's 21. So anytime he asked me to do something, Unless I literally have another meeting or work or whatever, I do it. So yeah. he was like, do you want to go for a hike? And I was like, yes, I will totally do it. And there was a whole lot of reasons I kind of would have said no, but it was a gorgeous night, as you said. And so I went. It was the it was a great little hike, but we <laughs> we went up one side and it was totally muddy. And it was really steep. And long story short, we ended up being out there for a lot longer than we thought. But we got to the lookout by going back to take a cutoff and went back the other way and then went back up. And so we had to go up and down a little bit. But it was really a gorgeous night. So I'm glad you got to um, be out on the boat. But we have to talk about that because <laughs> do you remember Please. Lisa um, who came on with Suzanne Jockus? Yeah. Okay, so she has a blog and it's called um, Funny Starts with Foo. And today she talks about the fact that her husband would like to sell everything they own and buy an RV and go travel the world or travel the country, I should say. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, you've been looking at boats or your husband's been looking at boats, which we talked, you and I talked about privately. And then I have been looking at RVs. Because I want to get a class B RV and I was looking at sprinter vans and kind of those, those like RV versions of sprinter vans. And I was like, I really want to get one of these. I've always wanted one. I literally, you're going to laugh so hard. I used to have, they weren't Polly Pockets, but those little Barbie dolls when we were kids, mm -hmm. they weren't Barbie dolls. They were littler. And I think her name was like Daisy or something. And well, I Barbie had, had a sister, Kelly. Nope. Smaller than Kelly? Nope. Smaller than Kelly. It was like, it was like a larger version of Polly Pockets. Okay. And I had a Winnebago and I loved that Winnebago. I loved it. Loved, and I was not a big, huge Barbie doll person. Like I played cause my friends did and you know, I had some, but I, for some reason have always just loved this Winnebago that I had. And it was like, it was made out of metal actually. And it was probably two feet wide and I don't know, 13 inches tall. I love this Winnebago. I've always wanted a Winnebago. I don't know why I, I don't even know if I'd end up liking it. Yeah. Um, but I've been looking at these class B RVs. And so you guys have been looking at boats. You clearly got one. So tell me how it is. It's awesome. I would have to say our second day was better than our first day. And <laughs> I'm trying to prove you wrong. Um, but it is nice just to get out away from everybody and just 
put up the music really loud and the Ella really wanted to learn how to surf this year. And being that we can't go anywhere and yeah. do anything without being quarantined when you get there first. And then, yeah. um, then your vacation's over cause you have to come back to work before you even out of quarantine. So we decided that we got a, like a surf boat. I don't uh-huh. know if that was, it's called, I don't even know what it's called. So you can surf behind it. Like eventually she'll be able to drop that rope that you saw in the picture. Oh, cool. And then you can just surf behind the boat. Oh my gosh. So that will be cool. her surfing, learning to surf this summer. But all the kids are going to learn, right? Oh yeah. Everybody's been up on it. Okay. So far. Yeah. So are we worried about Tristan and his head injuries or? So yeah. So the people that don't know, my son had a TBI a year ago and where he lost all memory, he had no balance. He couldn't um, walk without holding on to something. And so, yes, that it is a huge concern. So wakeboarding is a lot different than the wake surfing. When you're wake surfing, the boat's only going about 10 miles an hour. Oh. And you were literally like four feet behind the boat. Mm-hmm. So when you fall, you just actually like sink into the water. Okay. Like, I don't think you're just going to catch an edge or something and just like, bam, I suppose you could do that. But chances are you're, you're just going to like fall and it's like jumping into a pool. Now, if I would be freaking out if he was wake surfing because he's much further behind and the boat's going a lot faster Okay. and we will probably not let him do that. And I probably won't let him go on an inner tube either. The longer we can have him without having another injury his body can just heal fast or more, I guess I should say. And, but I, that was, that will always be a concern of mine. Like he, there's a lot of things he won't be able to do because of that injury. Like most likely won't be able to be in the military or a fireman or even a police officer for, um, because of that injury. But, um, but as long as I can keep him (laughs) safe right now, because eventually like in a year, he's going to be a, an adult and he's going to be able to make those decisions. So I just have to, but I, I'm okay with him wake surfing. Cause it is, you're going literally really slow and he could just walk onto the back of the boat if he wanted to. Oh, really. okay. Yeah. Well, and for those that don't know him, he is, um, super active, super physical. Like he's the kid who would like to go screaming down the mountain at a hundred miles per hour. And he's totally like a thrill. I think he's a thrill seeker. I mean, yeah, I, I can't keep him in the house. Yeah. <laughs> like he like he's already ready to go outside. I'm like, you have to do your chores first and then go out. But and he will literally ride his mountain bike 30 miles at least every day. He's all over town. And and then it makes me worry now that we've been hiking and stuff around, you know, just where we live. And he's like, oh, yeah, I take this trail. And I'm like, oh, because I, you know, he's gone. I don't really think of really what he's doing. But then he's yeah. on these trails like he could be injured at any point. But. Um, I also couldn't keep him from the things that he loves forever because at one of his counseling, I think I told you this, one of his counseling appointments, the doctor asked, Justin, is there anything that, um, if we took it away from you, that would make you sad? And he said, you've taken everything. Yeah. That one, like he, you did like tell he's me that. not going to be any worse than that. So that broke um, my heart. We, at that moment, the doctor's like, you have to do something. And so we gave him back his scooter and then, we, then he eventually got on his bike and, Now I can't keep him in the house, but he does not jump on his bike anymore. And, um, he does wheelies, but that's on usually it's supposed to be on flat ground. It is not, but and he's um, wearing a helmet. He, you know, all those injuries he had, I do have to tell everybody he was wearing a helmet even when he had those injuries. So thank God it helped. It would have been a lot worse, but he did wear a helmet and a MIPS helmet at all at, at, at that as well. So, um, is that the one where injuries are, is that the one where if it's you... like an extra protection, it's like, it's something within built inside the helmet. Okay. And if you get in an, in a crash, you send it back and they send you a new one or is that a different one? Well, I don't know if they like warranty it that way. Um, we have had that happen where, um, when I got in my bike accident and they replaced my helmet, um, and they just said it was a manufacturer's defect, but, um, okay. I think it's because I landed on it. <laughs> <laughs> So have you, have you heard, I know we're diverging from our topic, but have you heard about my, um, mountain bike story? I think I've told you this, but I haven't told me again. I have a horrible memory. So, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I, okay. I'm an ex athlete. Like I really think that I'm still 20 in a lot of ways. And I think I've always had this thought that I could do things that maybe I couldn't do. And, and I see people do it and I go, that doesn't look so hard. You know, I can do this. So 
when, like I said, you know, I try to like say yes when my son asks me. So one day he says, Hey mom, you know, my friend and I want to go up to Mount hood and do the mountain bike, um, trails and, and everything at, is that at ski bowl? Yeah. Okay. Which you know about that. And I was like, yeah. Oh yeah. And he's like, well, do you want to come? And I'm like, absolutely. And I'm thinking, I'm not going to be one of those moms that sits in the the lodge and like drinks toddies or whatever, you know, I'm going to go out and I'm going to bike with them. I like to, I like to be outdoors. I like to bike. Um, now mountain biking, uh, I really wasn't sure about that, but you know, I I'm kind of active. I like to do that kind of stuff. So we get out there and we're cruising up the gravel thing and he's like, okay, oh, case, should we start on a green, which is like medium, correct? medium level is it medium level green is medium level um i i don't know what the markings are up okay. there and what those mean yeah well so i'm like no why would we start at medium like let's go to black diamond or whatever like let's oh, start God. with the big stuff yeah and he's like are you sure i mean i'm like okay well <laughs> so so we go well i said hey look don't just stick around for me you guys just go off and do your thing so we get on this path and immediately they're off like gangbusters, right? Well, I get to these things and the drop off is like three feet. It's like not, you know, it's like serious drop off jump material, you know? So I end up and I'm wearing, <laughs> by the way, a skirt with the attached leggings on my bike. Mm -hmm. So this becomes important because I decide I'm going to walk my bike down one of these drops. And it was like maybe 24 inches. Well, what happens is I just got like, I'm, I'm across the crossbar. So I'm, I didn't actually get off to the side. I just put my feet on the ground and my skirt hooks on my seat. So my back tire is up. I've now stepped down with my feet. My front tire is down. My skirt attaches to the bike. I fully step down with the second foot. The bike comes over me, hits me in the back of the head, pushes mm. me over. I land on a rock on my chin. I've totally cut myself. I, by the way, I haven't done anything but walk down this. <laughs> this rock. Yeah, that's terrifying because you can't even walk down at that point. Oh. It's scary. Oh, no. Yeah. So then I just got off the stupid bike and I literally just walked down the whole thing and I got to the end. I was like, okay, peace out. I'll meet you guys in the lodge. <laughs> Yeah, that's scary. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I think that I'm better than I am. And then I get, you know, like today after last night's hike, I, I'm a little sore. I'm, a little, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little sore. That's a good feeling, though, yeah. I think. I so, like what, so don't you think that COVID is making us all like want to have some flexibility and get away from it all? I think so. I definitely, that's how we feel. We want to do yeah. something, but there's nothing really to do safely. Yeah. And, or there's so many people out there that are just ready to like, this is, we're done with it. And although I do want to be done with it, I feel like we're not done with it. And I feel yeah. like we still have to be careful. Like it's just, um, it's just challenging to find uh, something that everybody enjoys Yes. And still get out. But I, I mean, I'm on with that with you. I think when the kids are older, maybe Michael and I will do what you're thinking with Eric now is getting, I, I wouldn't want a huge RV, but no. you know, something on the smaller side, like those the little Mercedes. Like, yes, yeah, exactly. That's yeah. what, that's what those are. They're, they're really kind of small and they're more like a big van. Just what you need. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. And then just go yeah. travel. Like I would totally do that. I, I, yeah. I agree with you on that one. That's, that's but what I'm when you kinda... get there, like, I mean, some areas are really bad. Yes. Well, okay. Yeah. So this is the thing. This is just our little COVID talk for a little bit. We go to, we go outside of Newburgh for this hike and we decide, okay, well, we're thirsty. Cause I drink all my water. We're thirsty mm -hmm. and we need to get some dinner for on the way home. So we decide on, on our way down, we order a pizza and we decide we've got time before the pizza is ready. So we're going to stop at the grocery store. So we stop the grocery I am not kidding you. I did not see one person wearing a mask except for my son and I. The, Those are the like people that don't believe this is really happening. I they think, think it's like a, a like a government conspiracy or something. Yes, it is shocking to me. And I was so you know what I think it is. I think it's like um you know like the Walking Dead or zombies. I think 
just think of the zombies as sick people, but we don't necessarily know which one is, you know, they're not yeah. dead. They're just really sick. And so we are in a zombie apocalypse right now. It is kind of like that. I mean, I've never you know, been and people are like collecting guns and putting them in their house because they're waiting for like the war to break out yes. and like people get really sick and then they get desperate and then you have to protect your household and not. Even I mean, I don't people. think it's going to become to that, but I do no. feel like it is sort of like a zombie land out right now. It's so weird. And I, I'm shocked because, you know, in Tualatin, you're now seeing a lot of people wearing masks. Um, although at the beginning they weren't, and my family was, we felt like the odd man out, like everybody's staring at us thinking that we think, you know, this is like some big deal. Well, as of tomorrow it's required, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. But it's shocking that even yesterday in Newburgh, I mean, I know it's a small little town. No one, not what, not even the person that brought our pizza out was wearing a mask. They wouldn't let us come into the thing, which was fine. We just called and said, hey, we're here, ready to pick up our pizza. But they didn't even wear one coming out. They're like breathing on it. And yes. Stuff. Yeah. Yes. I get kind of weirded about that too. I just I don't know. know. Yeah. Well, we've talked about several times about, okay, when we go in to order from somewhere, if they're not wearing masks, then we just say, hey, we're not comfortable with this. We're leaving, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's happened to us three times. Um, and we didn't realize it till we'd already ordered. So I, I, it's, and they're all small little places that yeah. we've been. One was at the beach last night was at Newburgh. And then one was, um, this great little boba place. Um, they, nobody had masks on even in the back, like making up. And I do understand that it's hard to work in those things, but trust me, you get used to it. I've been wearing masks for nine years in the salon. They really don't bother me at all. No, I think there's some like the um, cloth ones that we have. Um, the club has provided. Those are, I sweat in those, but if you wear those like paper kind of bluest, the ones that you get at like the doctor's office. Yeah. And I get, I know, understand that they're not in 95s, but they're still a barrier. Those yeah. ones I have no problem with at all. Yeah. So it just, I it totally. just takes time to get used to anything like, like anything. I agree. Yeah. Change is hard. Well, I started telling, you know, my clients, cause I, I always show up in one and it made them feel a little uncomfortable at the beginning. They're like, do you want me to put a mask on? I'm like, no, I'm wearing this for you. I'm wearing this out of respect for you. I'm in your home. I feel like that's the right thing to do. And so you're right. I have been wearing one for quite a while now and you totally get used to it and it doesn't even become a thing after a while. So I don't know. It, it'll just be interesting. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens, but I'm, I, well, and I, I think you it. just have to limit who you're going to spend your time with and yeah. it's okay for them to feel the way that they do if they don't really feel like this is a big thing. But for me, I do. And I'm going to surround yeah. my people who feel the same way and I will feel safer hanging around people who are a little bit more due dil diligent, diligent against, you know, what protecting themselves and protecting others. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I don't know what to believe. You see everything all over the place. And I'll, I'm like, I'm just going to err on the worst case scenario that everyone is contaminated. Right. And if I just protect myself, then I'm good. Yes. I and totally that doesn't mean I still won't get it, but it, I'll do right. my best to try not to. And, and maybe, maybe we, maybe I won't get as sick, but I don't want to give it to somebody who might, I do have some old clients and or older clients, sorry, not old clients. I have yeah, old totally. clients that I've had for many years. If that's what that means, but <laughs> you have both. You have both. I do. I just want to protect them. You know. Yeah. Anyway, I agree. So, do you believe in superstitions? Um, I, you know, I don't think that I do. But then I do things that were like, like the other day we were knock on wood, knock on, and everyone's trying to find a piece of wood in the house. So, even though we don't, but we do. Yes. Right. Like okay. You, you don't want to yeah. like chance. Take it. a chance. Like, right. Like, like, um, like, do you not want to believe in God? Like if that was, if you have to believe in God in order to go to heaven, okay, I'll believe in it. Exactly. <laughs> you know? but, exactly. Um, yeah. So, so tell you me. posted something, you posted something on your Facebook and um, yes. <laughs> it, it, I had already started thinking about doing doing a topic on here about superstitions because there's some crazy yes. superstitions out in the world. And when you get those letters, you're like, oh my God, I, like you get the email that says you need to forward this to 10 people or you're going to get sick and die of COVID or whatever it was, yes, right? I was going to say, so this is, yes. this is your post. Yes. It said, 
Um, I sometimes, or sometimes I wonder if all this is happening because I didn't forward that message to 10 other people. And let me just put this down for the record. That was not my original post. I stole it off of somebody else's and I can't tell you who it was because I don't even remember. But, yeah. Yeah. No, um, it was figured. not my post, but yes. But it made me laugh because I was thinking about this exact thing at the time. Now here's my thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows I'm an empty nester. Well, I was an empty nester now, my husband and I. And right after my daughter left, I really had a hard time when the first one went. And then um, when my daughter went, went I would, did really, really well. But this one night, I went to bed, and it always happens at night when you're tired and it's late. I just burst into tears. And he's like, what is wrong? And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Did I do enough? Did I teach them enough? Did I spend enough time mm -hmm. with them? Did I spend enough time with them doing things that they wanted to do instead of just things that I enjoyed to do, enjoy doing? You know, all the, did I teach them how to cook well enough? Did I teach them how to do this enough? So I actually told my husband before you posted this, I go, you know, sometimes <laughs> I feel like maybe I got a, this COVID thing is a do over because I was afraid I hadn't taught them enough. Mm. because literally yeah. them coming home, I know it's been really hard on them and I don't mean to dismiss any of this. And I know it's been super hard, but it has been so amazing for our family. Both of them have started cooking. I mean, my son has a kind of always. So been that's the difference, Melissa. Now that like they left your house as children, right? And they go yes. off to college and they come back. So now that these, there are these adults, they actually want to learn yes. and they, because they know that they, you have these tools that they, they want to learn. They didn't at the time, yes. you know, when they were, before they had left, but they're now like, they can appreciate, appreciate you and your experiences that you've had your whole life yes. to teach them now. But I think they had to go away to really appreciate and understand that. Don't you think? Maybe I didn't look at it that way. I was looking yeah. at it the way it was like, I was getting a little bit of a do over. Well, it and you are, but, but they had to have a different perspective before That's they came back. True. Otherwise it would have never changed because my daughter never wanted to cook before. And so right. she came home and she was like, I want vegetables. I want broccoli. That's not overcooked. You know, she had all these and it was all healthy stuff. Right. But she wanted to learn how to cook it so that next year when she goes back, actually this fall, when she supposedly goes back, she can cook this stuff. So you're right. Yeah. She actually was ready to learn it because before yeah. it was like pulling teeth. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, well, you're and, right. you know, she went off to college and she's like, oh, I've got this cafeteria that's going to do it for me or whatever. And then she's like, crap, they don't have very good food. Right. <laughs> this is yeah. horrible. Yeah. And maybe next year she's going to have an apartment or she'll live in the sorority or whatever. It's going to be a little bit different. She's going to need those skills. She yeah, didn't need she, them before. Yeah. She's actually going to live in a house um, yeah. with five other people. So she's going to sort of be on her own, you know. But here, be really fun. here is something. So I kind of got down this ro road of superstitions. And this is from insider.com. By the way, there are several different sites that you can find bizarre superstitions. But I thought this would be interesting for you to know in terms of your salon. Okay. So in India, they do not believe that you should trim your nails at night. Or get a haircut on Saturday. Because what happened? Well, there was never really an answer. Somebody said, well, you're more likely to cut yourself um, with scissors at night. And I don't think that they know why they have that superstition. Um, they're just kind of hypothesizing. I don't, I don't okay. think they really know. So, but I thought you'd find that interesting that. Cutting hair on a Saturday. Don't get a haircut on Saturday because that's bad. Mm, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And in Russia, putting empty bottles on the ground after you, you drank them is bad luck. Oh. Yeah. And in Somebody Turkey. Somebody must have like kicked it and broke it and stepped on it or something. Oh, yeah. Maybe. In <laughs> Turkey, this one's weird. The legend is chewing gum at night turns into the flesh of the dead after dark. Ew. I know. Isn't that disgusting? <laughs> and then in the UK, I didn't know this. In the UK, they say rabbit, rabbit on the first day of the month, and they believe it will bring them good, good luck for the rest of the month. But if you forget, you can say tabar, tabar right before bed. 
because that's rabbit backwards. <laughs> oh my God. I have a feeling I'm going to start doing that one just because it's easy and you want to have good luck all month. So you're going to be like rabbit, rabbit. As soon as you wake up on the first of every month. Okay. So, so you are you know, when, we, when we do our, when we do our Suzanne Jockis on the first, Oh, that's the first Monday of the I month. Know. Never mind. Yeah, I know. I was going to be like, well, we'll start it with rabbit, rabbit. <laughs> So I'm, I'm reading online right now on Huffington Post. It says that Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans believe that the soul lives in the form of our breath and a sneeze could expel the soul. Hence the expression. Oh, sorry. That's not right. God bless you. A sneeze could expel the soul from the body throughout the plague years in Europe. Sneezing was a grave omen. So God bless you. See, okay, I have heard that one, and I've also heard that the reason we say God bless you is because when you sneeze, your heart stops. No. Like it's it, it skips a beat or something. But then I've also read, yeah, that's not true. <laughs> but that was what I heard was the reason a long, long time okay. ago. Okay. Yeah. I've never even thought of sneezing and saying it. I just thought it was like, it's like a saying thank you or you're welcome. Oh. Or I didn't really think there was anything to it, but now I know. Yeah, I think there is something to it. This one I thought about because I actually do this all the time. Um, in Brazil, that you are not supposed to set your wallet on the ground because it will bring bad financial luck. And in China, purse on the floor is money out the door. Do you, where well, do you put your purse? Somebody's going to like take it. Well, exactly that for sure. But do you, where do you put your purse when you go somewhere and there's nowhere to put your purse? You don't put it in your lap, do you? put it in the floor. I do too. I do too. Hmm. In Japan, they tuck their thumbs into their fists when they go into a cemetery because the word thumb directly translates to parent finger. And the legend warns that tucking your parent finger in will protect your parents from death. Do you remember Dang. the one where we used to say, don't step on a crack or you break your mama's back? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> very, very similar. I would think my parent finger would be my, you know, my pointer finger. Cause that's why you're like, mm, stop doing that. <laughs> you know, you stick that finger out. Oh, I'm talking yeah. to you. Not my Apparently not. I'm not like going. Okay. Apparently not. It's the, it's the, the thumb. Where was that at? In China? Yeah. Where China. was that? Yeah. Maybe they, maybe their point of thing, fingers are really called thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to change that one. I, I don't know. It's <laughs> kind of funny though. <laughs> Both of my parents are gone, so I can walk freely in the cemetery. So we've determined that you and I are both a little superstitious. I think so. Yeah. What about like the number 13? What do you feel about that? Uh, you know, I don't have a problem with 13. In fact, it's like floors in buildings that just don't have the number 13 in it. I know, which I don't get. I'm like, that's pretty aggressive when you just go from 12 to 14. Yeah. Now, my mother used to tell me about 666 was like the sign of the devil or something. Right. In the Bible. I don't know. Is um, it from the Bible or is it just from that movie? There's a movie. No, I think what it's is it Rosemary's it, Baby or something. I think it's a Bible thing. She didn't watch scary movies. Okay. But maybe that came from that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't care about the about 13. I don't feel like it's bad luck, do you? Um it doesn't bother me. I'll use the number 13 cuz I'm weird with numbers. I think I've probably told you this. My favorite number is 8. So when I think of 13, if you add 1 plus 3 is 4, which is half of 8. Oh, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I know that's uh, it's weird and like you know my license plate is 317537 if you add it all up to one digit it's eight. Oh, now that i said that i might be wrong but um oh yeah wow yeah, I, I don't know so you think eight is your lucky number but why are you okay with 13 i don't i still oh because okay oh because if you, you take three. the one and the three 13 oh, wow. one and three plus and you add them together it makes it four and four is half of eight I know. Okay. It, it, when I actually say these things out loud, <laughs> it makes me um, seem really crazy. And I think people look at me like, oh my God, like <laughs> totally different level. But I just think of that as like, oh, that's okay. Cause that's a pretty good number or, huh. okay. So I love the number eight. I just, because I loved being eight, but I also think the eight was the same year I died. And then, um, but Wait, I also what? like, you think you died when I was drowned when I drowned. We talked about that. 
my sister said you didn't drown no. you're still here he goes, yes. but i did drown okay um but um i also like if i see something and there's a sequence some sequence uh, similar to the 317537 like on my motorcycle license in there it, there's like a 3175 on there and i was like oh that's good maybe <laughs> you know i just <laughs> it just makes me feel good like oh okay I like feel like it. you've just went over my head. I need to write all these numbers down <laughs> so I visually can see what you're talking about. Three one seven. <laughs> write this down right now. Okay. Everybody write this down. Okay. Three, three one seven. seven. Okay. Five three seven. Five three seven. Turn it upside down, your piece of paper. What does it say? Leslie. <gasps> I know. Shush. Wait, is that the numbers that are on your license plate? It is. I put them on there. Oh. Shush up. Okay. Wow. Okay. So do you think those are your lucky numbers? Um, I just, my dad taught me that when I was really little, the 317 thing. But um, I love the number eight. And I think if you add all of those numbers up to one digit, it becomes eight. So like when I think of, when I see a sequence of numbers, if it has any of those variations of the 317-537 in it, then I feel like, oh, that was like a good omen. Oh, and like wow. sometimes if it doesn't have anything, if there's no eight or any of the sequins in there, then I'm like, eh, I'm not sure how this is going to turn out. It sounds really weird. I'm sorry. Um, I don't, I used to talk about this a lot and I realized people just thought I was totally insane. So I really stopped talking about it. And I don't think about it all the time. I just see when I see that sequence, I'm like, oh, that's good. That's a good number. Okay. You've just blown my I'm mind. Sorry. And it does add up to eight. I just was doing the math. Okay, and... good. Cause I, I mean, I did it myself, but I'm not really good at math. So wow. Um, Okay. Yeah. It's wow. just kind of weird. I know I'm strange. And then I also like the number three, because if you have a number eight and you literally cut it in half, cut it in half. there's a three. <gasps> oh, I know. You are it's, a little superstitious. It's weird. And it's not that it, it, it's more like good luck. It's like, um, like, like when people find a penny on the ground. Okay. Like, I was just going to say this, that yeah. one. Now, but so you, it's something. Okay, so here's an interesting story. Like my mother-in-law, whose name is Penny, yes. when she finds a dirty penny, she feels like, oh, she hasn't done something right, or she, like, she was like, she's being a, a bad girl, like because she found the dirty penny. What? Like there was, like maybe she didn't do something right. So, so does she was, clean it up? Put it back on the ground? No, I, th I just think she's like, oh, like there was something that she had done that maybe she could have done differently. She sinned. Um, kind of, yeah interesting that's how she takes it and then because she's very religious so i think she looks for and then when she finds shiny pennies it's like um being rewarded with something good that she had done okay so f the the find a penny pick it up and all day yeah. you'll have good luck that's a u.s superstition but did you know that i didn't know this part that finding the penny on the ground especially if the head is facing up is a sign of good luck so i didn't know that the head what, does it mean? what happens if it, it's tails well, it? it's still okay, but it's not as good. Okay. It just says so maybe that would be somebody else's variation of the dirty penny if it was the maybe. Tail. And then even luckier is to find a penny stamped with the year of your birth or anniversary. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of fun. Yeah. Huh. That dirty penny thing. I think I just go around cleaning them and putting them back. <laughs> <laughs> huh. That's know. interesting. Yeah, I yeah. don't do that. Hmm. I don't like black cats, though, walking in front of me. Really? Yeah. Because it's not very often that you see a true black cat. Yeah. Usually they have some white on them or whatever. That's because probably people sacrifice them or use them as their witch's cats. Oh, so. that's mean. I think it happens. It's sad. That's horrible. That there are witches out there, I think. <sighs> like, we might be considered witches, Melissa, yeah, but we're not by what we talk about and what we believe. I know we're not like, no, we're not. I don't know. Okay. So speaking of, you know, you and I, we talked about the book that we've been reading and I'd been practicing and, um, we do have a sad update today. Well, sad and happy, I guess all in the same thing. Um, that police were called out to North Plains on Saturday. A homeowner was clearing brush 
in their their property and they found human remains. And um, it they have been confirmed that they were um, Allison Watterson's remains, who was the girl that we featured and we've talked about a couple times. We talked to her mother and then we also talked to the private detective that was working on her case for the family. Um, they have been confirmed that they were her remains. But Leslie, did you do any reading about that? Because I want to tell you about it. Was it confirmed it was her? I mean, yeah. we assume that it was her. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. what was their circumstances? Do they tell you anything? Yeah. So I found out a little bit. First of all, the homeowner was clearing out brush and- Wait a minute. Like, Which homeowner? So just a random homeowner. No okay. no homeowner that we've no, known or heard in this story. Okay. They were clearing out brush and um, it was between two properties. So it was like at the edge of their property and they were using- um, a tractor to clear that out. So I don't exactly know how they discovered this because that could have easily gotten pushed into dirt or the brush or whatever and never have. And you saw those pictures, that grass was probably four feet tall. Well, that, so that's the thing that the um, police spokesman said is, first of all, this is nowhere that somebody would have wandered into. Yeah, It was dense and very thick. So it was not somewhere, it was somewhere where her body was put. And, um, it wasn't like they, she wandered into that area and something happened to her. Okay. No, for sure not. Now, I don't know any of the details of like, did she have all of her clothes that were, that she'd been seen in last, you know, was her backpack there? I don't know anything about that. They haven't said, well, it said something about, um, where her belongings were found before. Okay. That same property? No, it's not the same property as her belongings were found before. In fact, um, it's 15800 Quarry Road, which is interesting because when you look at all the different places that have been markers in this case, um, Quarry Road is directly down the road from the friend's house that they, that they stayed with on Friday night. That apparently heading there. What's that? Could she have been heading there? No, I don't think so. Like how far away from that house that she was at? She could have went to that house. So um, let's just kind of, it's basically a big triangle. Okay. So where her car, where the car, the stolen truck that they had been in was found, let's just say that's the most east corner of the triangle. They had been at the most west triangle of the corner on Friday night. But they had st- they had parked this truck that apparently did not work, but for some reason worked the next day. And they were, le- he says, the boyfriend, Ben Garland, said he last saw her at the bottom of the triangle at this house or near this house. But it wasn't very far from the friend's house that they'd been at on Friday. It's like a half mile in any direction. This whole triangle is okay. like a half yeah. mile. Well, where she'd been found was only 1.75 miles um, from where the truck originally was. Now, if you drove there, it's about seven miles to drive there. But as the crow flies, if you walk through people's property, it's not very far. But it's also directly down the road from the west point of that triangle where the friends they were at on Friday night. Which, you know, I'm not casting. Everybody's innocent until proven guilty. But I've always thought the friends had something to do with it. I I believe that house had plays something in it because I just can't believe he did that all on his own. Like, do you? And was she directed. really out there running around with him all night? Well, that that's did also been earlier in, on. Exactly. That's all, all. That's also very mysterious to me is he says they separated midday and you're telling me she just like if she walked away and was like, you know, I'm done with you. I'm done with this, whatever. She's going to either walk to somewhere she knows, or she's going to walk home. And if she's going to walk home, she's probably going to walk along the road. And if she's trying to walk to someone she knows, she's going to take as the crow flies, right? Because it was seven miles, well, not that was from the, where the truck was, but it's about five 
on and the maybe road. they all know those areas exactly like, and she'd been, don't know been that area. i would never do that but she might because maybe that's what they did out there i don't know he claims that's kind of what they've been doing their their movements around that area they were walking through people's property they weren't walking on the roads the roads would have taken them much longer so i believe that this indicates even more that this body was dumped from people at that house. I wonder how he reacted when he was told the news. I don't know. Yeah. I wonder too. I wonder too. I think as detective Michael Connell said, you know, when you're under the influence of such major drugs, um, I just don't know that you can guesstimate how they're going to act and react and what they really remember. Well, and if he doesn't even remember, like he could have just been on drugs where he doesn't even remember. Yeah, for sure. Sure. But that doesn't make him innocent, right? If no. You, yeah. Yeah. Just because somebody was drunk driving and they killed people, but they don't remember it. They still did it. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yikes. So we're happy. I mean, I'm happy that Misty now has some closure. She can put her daughter to rest and she's got all that behind her. I'm sad for Misty because I know Misty really believes she was still alive somewhere. And but um, she also was organizing searches. So I think there's yeah. a part of her that was like, well, let's just rule this out. For sure. I think she was also looking for maybe somebody's cellar or basement, basement. or you know, something along those lines. Yeah. She specifically called that out as one of her her theories on that. But, um, yeah, so that's new news for everyone who's been listening and following that case. And we're really sad that this came to that sort of an end, but I'm, I'm happy that at least they have her and they can lay her to rest. And, um, it also makes a case going forward a lot more likely to be solved. Don't you think? I believe so. Once you have the body and hopefully, I mean, I don't even know what would be left at that point, but, um, then hopefully is some evidence of something out there that they can at least tie it to somebody or at least start the ball rolling. So I mean, we all know Ben is like a key person in this, but, um, but if he doesn't remember, we need, we need more, right. You know? We need somebody yeah. to come forward. Um, I will tell you, there's a picture online of these investigators and they are down on their hands and knees shoulder to shoulder and they are literally looking in the brush on their hands and knees like moving through this area so it's probably bones is that what we're looking at here i have no idea i have no idea what they were looking for but they are with a fine tooth okay. comb yeah. looking i was super impressed with that i was like wow okay they are not leaving any stone unturned and I'm yeah. glad they are because you and I have, we follow a lot of these cases and things just don't get done right. You know, they don't know. We just enough. need to find Kyron over there. I know. Well, kind of over there. I know. It's crazy. That's really sad. Yeah. I'm glad that they found her though, at least. Me too. Um, I wish it was in, in a different situation, but yeah. Crazy. Um, I want to start a series on going into, and I mentioned this to you on like stalkers. Yes. And then, the, and then, well, actually, did I say stalkers to begin with? Um, I wanted to do crazy ex-boyfriend and girlfriend stories, move into stalkers, and then people like with irrational behaviors, and then maybe some techniques that we could all learn to diffuse some irrational people. Oh, good one. Because I think that's all a tool that everybody should new, use or need to have in their you know, toolbox because I've known, um, a friend personally and as, as a family have dealt with somebody who, um, was super irrational, who actually murdered somebody in the family. And so I think it's important to have some things in our tools to like, be able to walk away from situations. So I'd like to move forward into that eventually. It might take us a few weeks to do that, but, but in the, in the meantime, we're also going to have other stories that pop up here and there. Well, and also if we have listeners who would like to come on and talk about um, their stories or experiences with some of that stuff, we'd love to, we'd love to have guests on that have firsthand knowledge or can talk about it. 
Yeah. That's what I would love. So they can um, either contact us through our website, which is salonsluice.com. I have an email, which is salonsluice at yahoo.com. And Melissa, what is your email? My email is salonsluice at gmail.com. Okay. So you're G, I am yay, yah. Yeah. Hey, your friend's blog, Fun Starts With Foo. Yes. So, you know, we're an FU family. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I love that. So I always say, when people are like, how do you spell your last name? I'm like, F you. <laughs> and then I finish the rest. And some people laugh. Some people get my humor. And some people just are just waiting for the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because when I go to the pharmacy, um, there's this old older guy that works there. and But it's a young guy at the counter. And I, he's like, what's your last name? I'm like, F you. And the old man behind the counter, he always giggles. <laughs> Okay, so I'm sending it. I'm sending you the link and you should we'll put it up on our, our website too so people can go and listen to her. She's super funny. So I'm gonna put her blog underneath this week's episode number. Okay, perfect. Which is what number? What are we at? 19? I don't know. Is it 18 or 19 this I don't week? No. I don't know these things. Okay, and everybody on July 6th, which happens to be the first Monday of the month, we still have a few signups available for Suzanne Jockis. You can call in, and she's a local psych psychic here in Portland, Oregon. You can call and ask her a, one or two very specific questions, And um, but in order to do that, you need to sign up on th either... Th it's through Sign Up Genius, but there is a link on our website. There is also one on our Facebook page. Sign up, and then we will send you a link the day before. Is that how we're doing it? Yeah, day and before. At least an email confirmation the day before, and then the, right before your appointment at 1 o'clock, everybody calls in at the same time through their computer, and we do a little show. So It's so um, funny because we get a ton of people interested. I get a ton of people all the it's time. It's the last minute. And it's so funny because I think people then get a little frozen of fear. Yeah. Like, oh gosh, okay, I have to commit. Okay. And you don't like you can cancel. That's fine. We obviously don't want people canceling too soon because we want to be able to put people on the waiting list in there. But right. Um, and you can go back up onto sign sign up genius and can cancel yourself if you need right. to, if you have something else that comes up. But um, you know, I think people get a little, uh Am I right. going to hear something I don't want to, which is not the and way it's it not really scary. Works. It's not like that at all. No. Um, and if you listen to our past shows, if you want to go back and listen, then you'll understand how she works and the kind of answers that she gives people. So you don't have to be fearful yeah. about it at all. And if it's something that you don't want to have on our show, but you want to, you know, maybe reach out to Suzanne Jockis, you could do that um, yeah. directly and have a reading directly from her. Like you don't have to go through us if that's something that you don't want to have, you know, out for the public to hear. So yeah. SuzanneJockis.com, um, you can reach her that way for a full reading, but we would love to have you on our show. I think we still have at least four signups left. Okay. It always is the last minute when people sign up. I think people don't know what they're going to be doing, you know, because we're so busy right now. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, we would appreciate if people would like to sign up. That would be great. Yes. Awesome. Well, I've been also getting a lot of questions, Leslie, about how did you come up with your name? Who are you guys? Like, who's your friend? You know, all this stuff. So I thought you and I should should talk about this one more yeah. time. I feel like we have, but maybe we haven't. Um, so Leslie and I have known each other for, I don't know, 15 years. I started at the club 15 years ago. I, well, no. no. 16 years ago. Tristan was six months old. Okay. And then 16 and a half years. So I mean, shortly after that. Okay. So at some point you started doing my nails and we always have the most interesting conversations and she used to do it out of her house. And then when the kids got old enough, she was able to have her own salon at Bay club, which is a local fitness club. And now, you know, we just seem to have these really interesting, unique conversations. Authentic conversations about deep thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Deep thoughts. Deep, deep, authentic <laughs> thoughts. Like, yeah. Right. Cause I feel like I can, like, you know, me better than a lot of people on a surface level would know me. Right. Yeah, Cause you kind of like know I how I tick a little. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. And yeah. and that's why I love you because, and you're not afraid to be authentic, which I love. And we have some of these crazy conversations. And when I bring up something crazy, you're not going to like go, oh, she's, you know, <laughs> she's a wackadoo or whatever. <laughs> so, well, if anything, it kind of like, huh, that's a very interesting thought. Let's go into that a little bit more. Yeah. Where some people don't even want to waste their time on things that you know, I, I have things that they just don't normally think about. Right. Right. Like right. they just don't even want to bother. Right. Yeah. So that's why I love it. It's like, Oh, what do you think? Like, I love when I said spontaneous combustion last time and you're like, what? I know it's just a reaction. And I was so shocked that you hadn't heard of it. So okay. anyway, let's go into like our name a little bit more. Yeah. So, so I have been yeah. researching that by the way. And I, I was trying to plan it for this one, but we're going to do it another time because it was way more complex than I wanted to kind of get into it. So, uh, we are going to do that. that. I'm ADD and you can follow me. Yes, like, you are a little ADD like, and yeah. you, you will literally change topics mid conversation, but you can get it. Like, you know, where I'm going, where some people are like, what now, what are we on now? What are we talking about? <laughs> like you follow along. And I love that about you. Like, <laughs> so yeah. anyways, we were sitting in the salon and we always talk about these things and we sometimes bring in who's ever else in the salon and, and kind of bring them into the conversation. But we were literally, and, and this is the other thing about you is that you you have a million things going on at all times. Like <laughs> you've had so many different businesses while I've known you. You're I just know. not afraid, you no. know, no fear. So I just want one really successful, great one. <laughs> well, or <laughs> life is it life is a marathon, right? It's just, yeah. you know, I don't know. Anyways. So, so we were sitting before like beginning of March, I think. And you're like, Hey, or we were talking about some subject and we're like, we should do a podcast. And you're like, okay, I'm going to go start it tonight. And I'm thinking, oh, she's not really going to. No, she <laughs> full on did. And then three days later, she wants a topic from me. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So we totally talked about names and we, neither of us remember what our first name choice was, but it had already been taken. Yes. And it was something having to do with a salon, but we, yeah, not for the life of us, remember what it was. It was, it was really good. Name, whatever it was, somebody had it. Yeah. So we yeah. had to come up with another one. And then I had a friend call me and she's like, okay, what what is a sleuth? She's like, is it like a sloth? I'm Which like, is no. one of my favorite animals, by the way. Like if my dad was an animal, like his spirit animal would be a sloth. Like really super like, like no. chill. Yeah. Total chill. Total so, chill. Yeah. So anyways, this is how we got started. And you know, I'm a, I'm an interior designer, so I don't even do this for a living, but I've always thought when I retire, I'm going to be a private investigator. Yeah. Um, and my nickname by my family, my, my husband's side of the family, they, they coined the phrase sticky paws because I always can get to the bottom of things. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm just not satisfied with, oh, this is the answer. I'm like, wait, no, wait, that doesn't make sense. Wait, if you put these three things together that also happen, like that doesn't make sense. And they're like, you just yeah. won't drop things. I'm like, no, right. it, it didn't make sense. That answer didn't make sense. That puzzle piece does not go there. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. If it does not fit, you must acquit. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, when I'm putting on my rubber gloves at work, when I'm between clients and I've washed my hands and you can't put a glove on when your hand is wet, uh -huh. I, I say that <laughs> if it doesn't fit, you got to quit. And everyone looks at me like I'm insane. <laughs> like you do know what I'm talking about, right? Because yes. I mean, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Well, and he got off for that. I'm really sure that that was like the reason OJ got off and that's so wrong. Uh, yeah. I yeah. Know. That's anyway. the case. But anyways, yeah. that is how we got started. That's a very long version of how we got started, but it is, and you know, you know, Leah from one of our first yes. episodes, do you know her personally? Yes. Okay. Um, so she calls, she says we're in a club and it's the GSD girls. Jeez. And you should be part of our secret club. And GSD is get shit done. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So we're the GSD club. Um, I think she might have been the founder and maybe she has other members, but she said that I could be in her club because like, like you said, like if I get an idea, I'm just going to try it. I'm just going to go for it right now before it fizzles out yeah. or before I forget that I was going to do it. Or you get less excited about it. <laughs> Yeah, because I do. I get these crazy ideas. And then um, but my husband, that's one really amazing thing. He's always supported me. 
not fully supported me, but he kind of lets my tether out and lets yes. me be free. And then that, so I went to a psychic once and they told me that she's like, I see you're like, you're like a balloon and there's this weight at the end. And she was like, that's your husband. <laughs> he did, he lets you do whatever you want in the wind and do this thing, but he always keeps you kind of grounded. I'm like, it's so true. He totally yeah. does. But you do yeah. that for him too. You let him you know, like, Oh, we're going to buy a boat now. Okay. We're going to buy some snowmobiles. Okay. We're going to buy some mountain, uh, mountain bikes. And we're going to buy, I mean, like he's had yeah, all we the have fun toys. toys. Well, because, and I don't know if everybody agrees with this. I, as a wife don't want him to ever say, uh, like if something, if it doesn't work out or whatever later, I don't want him to say that I ever held him back from something that he wanted. Right. Right. If, and if I do, it's because for his safety or something along those lines, but I'm more like, okay, let's figure out how we can do this. Like, so how do you weigh that with the part of you that's like, Hey, wait, we can't afford all these toys. Like he seems to sell them before he gets new. Right. Well, the thing too, with him is he always finds really good deals. He kind of works in an industry where he has access to good deals Uh huh. and he would never put us in a situation where we would be strapped okay. because of something fun that he wanted to do. Okay. Yeah. Right. Like, um, like we would never, I mean, ha- if he gets in an accident, then we might be strapped because of medical bills or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. And that could happen to anybody anytime. Right. Um, I also, you know, run the nonprofit and I always tell people we are one sickness away from being clients here. <laughs> So that is completely true. My husband is in healthcare and he always says that you're one illness away from bankruptcy. Right. So we are nowhere to judge when we have our clients come to us. We, we don't judge them at all. I don't even care because it could just be a situation. Maybe this month was tight and they just wanted a couple of things. I'm totally fine with that. I don't care. A lot of times they have nicer cars with me, but that's because at one time they were doing really great. Right. Right. You but should right talk now. They're should, not. You should tell everybody what your nonprofit is. <laughs> no, we are a student based. Oh, sorry. We are. A do, let me think about this. How do I word this? It is a donation based student run clothing closet for the city of Lake Oswego and city of Lake Oswego is typically known as a very wealthy community, but um, there is roughly, I don't know, a thousand kids in our school district that are on free or reduced lunch. And so my daughter and I have started, and a bunch of her friends, one of her really good friends, Jesse, is one of the founding members as well. Um, we allow anybody at this time, it used to be just students, but currently it's everybody to come in and um, in our community shop for free, for free clothes, and everything's donated. Um, so, and everything's pre washed. So they come in and they can just get clothes if they need them. Um, and especially now that summer, like we just went from, you know, winter, now we're falling into really hot weather and maybe they outgrew the clothes from last year. Right. Or maybe the parents were out of a job because of COVID, but now they got a new one and they need nicer clothes for work. Or maybe they don't fit because all of us gained a little weight during COVID. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't care what the situation is. I don't right. ask them what their situation is. I just say, what do you need and what size do you want? And we also do personal hygiene products as well. Which is great. And you take yeah. donations. How do you give a donation? Well, we would really love monetary donations and you can go straight to our website for that, but um, only because we need things like underwear and socks. And those are things that I believe should be brand new. Yeah. And we do run around, we run out of those very quickly. Um, we also have a, if you're local, you can sign up um, as a I have a place on there where if there's a family in in a specific need and we don't have it, I will only send an email at that time. So I don't, I don't overwhelm you with a bunch of emails. I only send it when there is something specific that a family needs. Like right now I need a bike. This like 10 year old boy, he's about my height. He's like five, two. Um, he really just wants a bicycle, but I don't know what this, I don't know what the living situation is. So I'm also thinking I need a, a lock for him. Right. And then, right. so that just happened last Saturday, but I, I have some friends I'm going to reach out to who do biking things. I'm going to see if I can find one through there, but that's a totally different subject. Yeah. But if anybody has yeah. a bike out there that they're, you know, close or willing to donate, you'd love that. I mean, I know we yeah. have a lot of local listeners, so, you know, and what was the name again? Lake Oswego? So it's, I love like Oswego.com. Go. Okay. Um, 
we were trying to rebrand it because the, what is like a, I love like Oswego. Everyone thinks that's so strange. But um, then we were saying we're calling it I L L O, which is I love like Oswego. I L L O clothing closet dot org. OK, because we are a 5013C. So um, we have a, do- a tax donation sheet right on our website. So if you do want to donate a bike or some money, you can do that. We would love that. Great. And we actually should tell listeners we have a new um, patron. Yeah. Is that a friend of yours? Yeah. Maybe. Marilyn, do a shout out. Whoop, whoop. Wait, there is another person. Oh, who? Let's go with Marilyn first. Let me see if I can figure out who that person was because we just got a new person. Ooh. Yeah. And we also have been, t- well, we haven't maybe talked about this a lot, but um, I want to know what kind of swag people want. Like, do people want t-shirts? Do you want a hat? Like, I'm interested in, you know, figuring something out, but I kind of want to hear from people what they would want. What what would you want to buy or what would you want to get for a donation? Um, we would love it if you wore our gear and yeah, you know, right. Spread the word. Yeah, I kind of like our um, glasses that we have on our logo, so I was kind of thinking that would be cute. But I also want something for guys that you know they can be a salon sleuth or an SS fan. It's like, what do guys want? Like, what do they need? How does that? You know what I mean? Like, I don't yeah, know. I don't either. I can't think of anything that Michael he needs nothing. Well, yeah. but we like hats, I think, sometimes. I mean, well, I don't know. That's why I want to hear about it. I want people to give us some suggestions. Leave a message some on our Facebook. trucker hats. A what hat? Like a trucker hat with our logo on it. Yes. I just got some I have all the company. stuff to make that, you know. Ooh, okay. You also have these this wood thing, which is another one of those things that your husband just supports and brings home a wood carving thing oh. for you. It's like a wood engraver. I love it. It's so cool. I got to figure out how to find out who our latest um, supporter was. Um, I'll have to look that up and we will definitely do a shout out for her in the next podcast. Great. But if you do want to support us, go on to our website. Um, You can also go on to um, Patreon, right? Yes, there's so many different ways you can support us, but um, you can go directly to our website or you can go to Mm -hmm. patreon.com. We do list all of our episodes on both both places, so you should be able to. um, This person's called Five F Five Five Fuss. That's the Foos. That's Lisa Foo. Okay, Five Fuss Foos. Yeah, Five Uh, Foos, not Fuss. Yeah. Foods. That makes sense. Five FUs. I'm kind of a. <laughs> <laughs> We're six FUs. <laughs> oh my gosh, you are six FUs. <laughs> I love her already. She is awesome. That's you cool. have to you have to um, subscribe to her blog because you'll find I'm going her to. funny. We're going to put that on the website. Everybody do that too, please. Yeah. Let's let's get her on and let's have her talk. She's she doesn't think she's funny. That's the the, the funny part about it. She doesn't even yeah. think it's funny. And then she like just comes up with this funny stuff. Let's do it. Let's yeah. just have her on. So next week, let's talk about crazy ex-boyfriend and girlfriends. Okay. You look up some stories. Let's get some listeners to tell us their old um, stories. Would old boyfriends, that. old girlfriends, um, crazy ones. I do. I remember um, I knew a girl who was dating a guy and he had bought her like a little nighty. And she saw him at a restaurant with another girl. So she went to his house and nailed the nighty to his metal front door. Oh. <laughs> and, you know, part of me is like, I totally get that. Yeah. yeah. And then part of me is like, God, you have to replace that door. door. Like, how do you fix that door? door now like you're permanently gonna have to have a nail in there and you're gonna have to hang a sign right what if she didn't do it in the center though was it a rental she didn't do it in the center i don't know i can't imagine if you're pissed you're probably gonna do it all over i (laughs) hope she didn't do it in the center because that would be classic if she did it right in the middle that would have been nice but i don't don't as somebody who's mad they're probably doing it like some weird place oh i thought that was kind of crazy and i think i don't 
you know, when you read something or you hear something, it was so long ago, you don't really actually know. Yeah. But I do remember hearing a story where this girl like sprinkled water all over the living room floor, threw a bunch of grass seed on the floor, oh, turned up no. the heat and left because uh, she found out her boyfriend was cheating. So he came back to like a lawn. <laughs> do you think that works? Yes, I'm pretty sure it does. Because you can put like um, grass seed in a plate of water and it will they're, they're, without dirt it will grow like immediately like within pretty close hour? i don't know maybe he was on vacation with somebody i don't know it, even, even if it wasn't true that sounds pretty terrible because <laughs> you have to rip that out right that's oh, gross yeah i mean i've heard of the one me. where they put the forks in the lawn and break them off oh i don't know because they got forked they got forked fork you yeah. so i forked a friend once I um, did that, but I didn't mean it to be mean. I did it because it was her birthday and we thought we were funny. But you left the forks in there. You didn't break them yeah. off. No, they were all sticking up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, yeah. The, that's funny. When you break them off is apparently the problem because then you have to go and like get them out. If you walk on the lawn, you'd step on the broken fork. Oh, yuck. Yeah. It'd be sort of painful. Well, Melissa. I think we're out. I think we are. It's, you yeah. know. It's time to I, I don't even think I have to edit this. I'm just going to post it. Okay, you do that. <laughs> Since we're late anyways getting it out to everybody, yeah. we'll just we'll just go uh we'll go el natural. That's right. Okay, All right. You have a great day. I can't wait to have you guys on the boat. Yeah, I would love that. That's that great. Ski. And then all when right. we get our RV, you can borrow it. There you go. I'd That'll say we fun. all go together, but it's way Why too. Why don't you small. just borrow our trailer? You want to pull it? Pull no. it with your Tesla? Yeah, we don't have anything to pull it with. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I, I think I would huge. be horrible at backing a trailer in. Horrible. That yeah, gives me I agree with you. I, I th those one cars, the one that you're talking about, like wherever you go, that's what you have. Yes, but that's the B so, class. I'm talking the B class, so it's like a van. It's like a big extent. It's like your okay. your van, but okay. it's like all tricked out and it's kind of got a higher top and everything. Our um. Our boat makes our van look small, if you can imagine. No way. Uh-huh. Wow. Well, you did have to get a boat for six. That six is comfortable. Melissa, it sits <laughs> 18 people. <gasps> and it's a ski boat? Uh-huh. Oh, my gosh. It's huge. Okay. I want pictures. Okay. Okay. Talk to you later. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. I want to share with you one of my go-to pieces of clothing during this stay-at-home order. I have literally been living 24-7 in shorts or leggings and, of course, my favorite sports bra. I've been wearing this sports bra since it was created, but I wanted to share with our listeners and give you a discount code. I'm so excited. I only wear handful bras, and that's handful.com because they are so comfortable and easy to wear. They also flatter, not flatten if you know what I mean. They come in adorable colors and patterns so you can wear them with anything. Through the summer, I'm always in a handful. My new favorite design of theirs is the double down bra, but I have all the styles and the leggings and I love their leggings, they're wonderful. So I wanted to share with you, go to handful.com and use the code Salon Sleuths. It's spelled S A L O N S L E U T H S. You're going to get 25% off any one item on their entire site, including sale items. So I encourage you, check it out. You will literally not be sorry. The adjustable bra for those of you who may be long torsoed or long or short, whatever, you can adjust it to where you fit. Love them, love them, love them. Get yourself one. If you'd like to be on our show and ask Suzanne a question or two about your career, your love life, or family, please contact us on our website at www.salonsleuths.com. We take calls the first Monday of the month for a full appointment with Suzanne. Go to her website. Thank you.